Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Maltenon. Nice to see you again. And um, I'm glad that you're still with me because I know I've been uh, a bit lazy lately in terms of posting tutorials, but thankfully today I'm with you, I'm recording this, so let me just show you what we are going to create today. Well, maybe it doesn't look very, you know, fire-like, but that's not the point. The point is, I'm going to show you a way of automatically emitting particles from uh, my hands, in this case. And the visual part, I leave to you. You can work on this on your own and you can make it look like a smoke, like a fire, like um, whatever, really, whatever you like. Those are particles, so uh, so we can do pretty much anything with them. And we are going to do this using only built-in tools that are available in After Effects Professional. I'm not sure about the standard edition, but who's using that, right? Um, okay, so let's get right to it. Let me get rid of this, this compositions and everything. And we start by importing this video footage and making a new comp out of it and let's call this final because this is going to be our final comp final uh, next step what we are going to do is we are going to use particle playground which is uh, pretty powerful I must say but most of, uh, of us uh, you know, motion graphers and uh, visual effects artists uh, rather use particular from trap code which is pretty amazing and I'm sure I'm going to show you uh, some tricks and some cool stuff that you can do with this uh, you know soon in a next tutorial or the one after that the thing is that I think about particle playground versus particular that particular is more like a motion graphics tool and particle playground is is more scientific like um, Okay, never mind that. Uh, so we are going to use Particle Playground and what do we need to do? We need to somehow emit particles from my hands, right? I mean from George's hands, because this is George, as you probably remember uh, from one of my previous tutorials. And let's, let's create the emitter for those particles. So let's import this video to a new comp let's call this source this is going to be a source of of our particles and first step to to just make things a little bit easier we are going to trim this to the moment when George starts emitting particles with his hands which is about here and let's just trim this and looks looks kind of funny and okay this is it and I think we'll leave the length of the composition so we can then overlap it in here right so uh, like this okay uh, so this is step number one step number two is we have to somehow um, isolate those hands from the rest of the footage and how do we do that well since George is not moving and nothing else is moving in the background, we are going to use time difference, which is uh, overlooked most of the time. And we're going to set this to an amount that we can see. You see what's going on, right? We have the... Uh, it's like difference blending uh, two frames that are offset from each other for the amount that is set in here. So let's set this to something reasonable like this. And okay, that looks nice. And we also need to click on the absolute difference. Okay, that's right. That looks nice. Uh, but when I turn this off, you see that we have George's outline in here and we don't want that 
So to get rid of it, we can just apply fast blur, which will take care of it. Five or something, and then uh, threshold I think will be good point, good thing to do. Ah, sorry, someone is at the door. Okay, I'm back. And where were we? Uh, oh yeah, threshold. Yes, 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 yes. That's it. And uh, okay, so so I think we're done with this. Or or no, 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 no. I believe that we need to uh, make the blacks transparent. So let's just um, apply Luma key to this and key out darker. Transparency, yes. Okay, that's that's okay, I think. Uh, so this is this is going to be our source for emitting particles, and now let's create the particles themselves, right? Oops, sorry for this. Um, and like this, okay. So let's drag this source to create new comb bottom. Well, let's let's call this particles and now we're going to apply particle playground and as you can see uh, in default it is using a Canon emitter and we would like to set the particles per second to zero so it does not emit any particles but we want to choose the layer exploder which will take the layer and its transparency and wherever it is opaque it will explode the pixels in other words it will tear the image apart and this is what we are going to uh, this is why we needed this source footage to be transparent and this is why we needed it you know in general so let's select the layer the explode layer to source and look closely what happens. See? Pretty pretty cool. Um, just let me turn this off for a second so you see what we have in here. This is our source that is emitting the particles on a transparent background. Let me turn this off for now. And let's turn on the particle playground again. And as you can see particles are created by that layer by exploding pixels from that layer and this is basically what we need but uh, we also need the particles going upwards so let's um, go to the gravity and let's change the direction to zero degrees which means up as you can see in here let's see how it looks Yeah, not bad, not bad at all. Um, but I think I would like it them to go a bit faster. So like force, let's set the force to 300. Okay, much better. And I would also like to change the opacity of the particles. And uh, like I said, uh, particle playground is more uh, scientific, in, in, at least in uh, in my feeling. So uh, let's go scientific on this. Let's create a new solid, comp size. That's right. And we'd like to precompose it and continue in in, in a new precomp. Let's call this uh, modification map. And let's alt double click on it and apply the ramp effect. And uh, yeah, I believe the default settings are okay. And let's apply um, turbulence displays. And let's set the size to something small and the amount to something big, like this. And the complexity to four, maybe. How does it look? Uh, not bad. Let's increase the amount. Okay, still looks cool. Maybe let's change the turbulent 
the displacement to turbulence smoother. Yeah. This this looks nice. Okay, and now we need to animate the evolution parameter. And what I'd like to do in, in those cases is to apply an expression, which you probably saw in my previous tutorials, which is time times whatever. And we want this to be changing very rapidly, so let's multiply this by a thousand. And let's do a quick run preview. Yep, I think that's it. And now let's go back to our particles and let's turn the mod map layer off. But let's go back to particle playground settings and go to persistent property mapper. And in here we would like to use layer as map and the layer that we want to use is modification map. And the attribute that we want to modify is, you know what, let me just go to a previous frame because that way is uh, much better to work if we're in a place in time before the particles start emitting. So this is it. And let's apply the opacity. Let's see how it looks. Quick run preview. Okay, you can definitely see that something is going on, but I think this is a little bit... Uh, you don't really see how it works. So let's change the parameters. Let's set the minimum value to negative 0.2. Oh, okay, that's better. And maybe let's uh, change the second parameter, which is y force. In other words, the force that is pushing the particles in the y-axis. And let's set this to negative 30. Let's see how it works. Okay, that's quite okay, I think. Yep. And now for the uh, final step of the particle comp, let's apply fast blur to blend the particles a little bit better and let's set this to maybe 5 or 7 okay that looks that looks nice uh, but uh, you know what let me just change the radius of the particles in the layer exploder parameter and the velocity dispersion so we will spread the particles a little bit more. That's right. Okay, so I think our particles are ready. So now let's go back to our final composition and let's put our particles in here. And you can already see how this works. Let me just do a quick RAM preview from this point in time. Oh yeah. Pretty awesome. So now let's try to make this look a little bit more like a fire. Um, but like I said at the beginning, from this point you're really on your own. You can do pretty much anything with this. I'm not doing, going to put as much effort in making this look like a fire because that's a whole different story. So let's just do some basic uh, modifications on this. So let's apply turbulent displays again like this and let's set this to let's set the size to a small number like like this. That's right. Complexity to 2 and the same thing with evolution. So I'll click on the stopwatch and let's write time times uh, 500 maybe. Let's see how it looks. Okay, that's pretty cool. And the next step, we would like to colorize this. And to do that, we are going to apply one of my most commonly used effects, which is Colorama. 
and as you can see this doesn't look very nice uh, so let's change the uh, the input phase from intensity to alpha because as you can see the intensity is pretty even in those pixels so we would rather like to use the alpha as the input oh yeah that's that's much better we can see the whole spectrum of colors in this when using alpha and we also like to go to modify and uncheck modify alpha and we are basically there the last step to take is to change the output palette and we can change it to fire and smoke and this already looks looks nice but I think that we can change it a little bit more so let's get rid of those colors and let's set this to black and this one to black also and maybe let's get rid of those intermediate colors Mm -hmm. We can get rid of this one, put this one in instead, get rid of this, 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 and this, I think. This is, this is pretty, pretty much the look that we are looking for. And what next? Next, we, we can apply some glow to this. So stylize glow and no, 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 default settings are definitely not what we are looking for. So let's change the colors to maybe a little bit uh, of an orange and red like this. And let's change the glow colors to AB colors and let's change the threshold and the glow radius. Yeah, something like this. And let's see how it looks. Yep, that looks pretty nice. Okay, so I think that covers today's tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed it. And make sure to leave a comment on my website, www.maltenon.com. And you can also find me on the creativecow.net forums and in the Creative Cow After Effects podcast as well. So, once again, this is uh, Maltenon. I hope you've enjoyed it. See you next time. Cheers. <laughs>